Today's scripture reading uh, is from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 6, uh, verses uh, 34 to 44. Uh, today, um, I'm going to talk about the famous and fascinating stories that uh, all of you guys are already very familiar with. What's the title? Jesus Party. Right. Party? Is this story about party? Oh, so party is supposed to be fun, right? But the story we read is not fun at all. No one is singing, no one is dancing, no one is, no one is drinking. I mean drinking water and so on. <laughs> so people in the story are very serious and they are very hungry. But so uh, the story cannot be party. But I insist that the story is about party, a special party, not ordinary party. But you know, some of me, some of you guys may, you know, ask me, "Hey, uh, Dr. Kim or Reverend Kim, do I have? Do you have any proof that this is story about party?" Yes, I have. The text. The text tells so. Let me look at the verse 39. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. Hmm, we are still confused, right? It's not clear. Um, there's no indication or hint or, you know, anything about party. But, if we read it, read this story, read this verse in the original language, the Greek, which is the uh, you know, original language of the New Testament, the party related words come out very clearly. So I translate in the accurate. The accurate translation of a Greek would translate like this. He instructed everyone to recline as if for a banquet, or party, or feast, on the green grass. And there is a foreign language there, that is called, you know, Greek. And then look at the pictures. Uh-huh, there's another one. I think there's another two. So what do you see? People, people sitting on the chair? No. They are reclining, right? Reclining. They look very comfortable and very relaxed. This post posture, this posture is a typical party posture in the Greek Roman society. So Jesus ordered them to recline for the party, for the pee, feast on the green grass. It means Jesus says, it's party time. So be, be ready. Interestingly, that there's another party, another party before the feeding story. That's the Hallow's birthday party, which is described in the chapter 6, 21 verse 28. Let me read it for you guys. But, Opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers, and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, he pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. He went out and said to his, her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, 
the head of the John the Baptist. And the end of the story, the John the Baptist is brutally killed. The party is over. So, um, as you see, we have two stories, two stories about parties. The one, on the one hand, there's Herod's party, and on the other hand, the Jesus party. So why does the author of the, the Gospel of Mark the show two different stories in a law, next by next? The reason is to encourage us to compare them, compare two different parties and want us to see the differences between them. So uh, let's compare them. Two stories that have similarities and differences. Yep, two parties. So, Herod and Antipas. The both stories, both stories have a host, right? Party host. The host of Herod party is, of course, Herod. And the host of Jesus' party is obviously Jesus. The both stories and also have uh, the guests, invited guests. Who does Harold invite to his birthday party? According to verse 21, it says, courtiers of officers and for the leaders of Galilee. That's the, the guest only invited to Herod's party. Who they are? They are literally people of power. They are people of the high status and great social and military power. They are VVVIP, like these presidents. On the other hand, who are the guests at the Jesus party? VIPs? The powerful leaders, mm -hmm. the Bible calls them crowd. The West crowd, no. Elite, powerful crowd, I don't think so. They are just hungry crowd. They are powerless crowd. In the verse 34, the crowds are identified as the people like sheep without a shepherd. What does people like without shepherd? Without a shepherd means the sheep has no sharp teeth or claw to protect themselves with. And they can't run away very quickly and they can't even find food on their own. The people like sheep without shepherd means they are unprotected, they are abandoned, they are powerless people. But there's good news. They are all invited to Jesus' party. What we know from both stories is that there are, there is, there are a host and guest. And in terms of guests, the house guests are very powerful and selective. But Jesus' guests are many and powerless. Nobody like shepherd, I mean sheep without shepherd. And where, where do you think Herod might have held his birthday party? He may throw his party in his place, his palace. The palace must be located in the center of the city, and it must have been decorated with uh, splendid and fancy stuff like silver and gold. Yep, on the left, there's a fence palace. In contrast to Herod's party place, Jesus' party was held in the deserted place. This place, that deserted place is abandoned and the marginal place. This is a place where people don't live and people don't want to go there. Why? This place is literally deserted to live. Harold's party place is held in the center of the city and fancy. 
But Jesus Party is held on the outskirts of the city, a deserted place. It is important to recognize the differences between these two locations. But more important, more important is what happened. What happened in these parties, places. Look at the story about Harold's party. Is Harold's party joyful and delightful? Well, it might be fun when the party just started. I think uh, delicious food would, been, would have been served along with a beat music, but things changed. Suddenly, when the little girl asked for the head of the John the Baptist at her mother's request, the innocent and the righteous prophet, the John the Baptist, was brutally murdered at that party. That's a horrible ending. So Herod's power represents a bad conspiracy to kill someone. His power indicates that there is no mercy in there. There is no sympathy there. There is no compassion there. His party has only political calculations and shadows of the death. Now let's go back to the Jesus party. What happened in there? As you already know, Jesus miraculously multiplied the breads and fishes and feed the great multitude. Here's the easy questions for little ones. How many breads? How many fish? Anyone? No? Five. The loaves of bread and two fishes. This is called obyongyo in Korean. So bread and dried fish is a regular food for the ordinary people. Of course, these foods are not fancy and not special. However, all who are in hunger are fully fed, and all crowds in there are very satisfied. We can see the overflowing abundance here and full satisfaction with food. Simply put, everybody happy. Is there any conflict in Jesus' party? Is there any tension? Is there any argument? I don't think so. Any murder? No. Instead, the party is remarkably controlled. People might be excited, excited to get a food, but no one does not make trouble to get more food. Jesus' party is peaceful and just make people very happy. Some says that sharing meals is sharing life because 밥, 밥이 생명이기 때문이죠. Food, food represents life, especially for the hungry. In Jesus' party, the food is shared with all the people. It means everyone gets alive. In the feeding story, Jesus' power is power of life. Where everyone gets alive, that Jesus provides. Can you see the differences between Harold's power and Jesus' power? Harold's power is part of death. On his party table, the head of John the Baptist is served. And his party, bloody, bloody party. His party, sinful party. His party, very sad, unjust party. However, Jesus' party is a party of the life. The Jesus, as a host, if giving a food, that means giving a life for everyone. No matter who they are, Jesus provides food to them. In Jesus' food handout, there, no one is excluded. There is no division. There is no discrimination according to their ages, according to their gender, according to their relationship with Jesus. No matter who they are, 
food is equally provided to all people there sitting on the deserted place. They are equally treated, treated with the same food, loaves and fishes. Adults and children, male and female, and Jesus' disciples and regular hungry crowds equally participate in the sharing the same food, regardless of their social status and power. What makes, what makes Jesus' party a party of a life? Let me read uh, verse 34. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. Can you see important motivation? So which make the Jesus set in motion? That's the compassion. The Bible says he had compassion for them. Compassion is the only reason why Jesus feed the hungry. Compassion is the only reason why Jesus heals the sick. How about Herod's party? No compassion there. No mercy. Only political calculation, anger, and hatred are filled with his party. The compassion is the key word we have to remember in this sermon. It is totally okay to you know, forget what I said in this sermon, but just remember one thing, this one, compassion. Compassion makes Jesus walk. Compassion makes Jesus' party the party of life. Compassion makes abundance, fullness, and happiness. We are all Christians. We are all followers of Jesus. We are all disciples of Jesus Christ. As Christians, as followers, we must have the heart of Jesus. The heart of Jesus. Compassion. When we have this compassionate heart, we also make our families, our school, our communities, our societies, societies, life giving place where all are happy, or are satisfied, or are empowered, as we see them in Jesus' party. Hell's party is very tempting, but don't go there. The miserables and bad things are waiting for you. Just go to Jesus' party. No matter who you are, Jesus welcomes us, welcome you, because He is very compassionate. And enjoy the meals He serves. Then now I think it's our turn. It's your turn. Throw a party. What kind of party? The party of life. You can invite ones who may spiritually hungry or physically hungry and fed, feed them with your compassionate heart. No matter who they are, then they are participating and you are participating, I am participating in making God's kingdom in your place. You stand. Okay, let us pray.